Welcome back. Or, um, hello, everyone. It's good seeing you again on this sixth day of April 2021. And thanks for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Has this weather graphic uh, first will be up first tonight. And we've got a blizzard warning out for the uh, Yukon Delta uh, zone there. And it's uh, for uh, Wednesday through Wednesday evening, tomorrow through tomorrow evening. And that's for uh, looking for three to five inches of snow to fall with that incoming storm and winds gusting to 50 miles an hour. So that'll create uh, visibilities under a quarter mile at times and blowing snow. And the uh, heaviest wind and snow will be out toward the uh, coastline. Then we've got a winter weather advisory for Bristol Bay. And uh, that's for the same time period, Wednesday through Wednesday evening. And uh, that's for four to eight inches of snow, which uh, is more than what the uh, blizzard area has forecast with gusts of 40 miles an hour there. And that it's uh, the heaviest uh, snow and wind will be from Cape Constantine to Good News Bay. And uh, that's winter weather advisory. And that's for visibilities down under half a mile at times. So from there, that's the only uh, area currently that has any watches, warnings, or advisories out. Satellite imagery, it's been a lot of clear skies over the uh, state. Um, especially the central and eastern interior, Copper River Basin. And uh, you can see a lot of clearing there in the, into the Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, uh, east side of Kodiak Island. And then clouds uh, with the system there in the panhandle brought some rain uh, and snow. Well, snow at higher, at, at, with, any with any elevation was in the form of snow, otherwise rain and snow, but mounts weren't all that heavy. One of the heavier mounts was at, uh, let's see, Wrangell picked up about a quarter of an inch of precipitation that fell in the form of rain and snow. Sitka about, uh, 14 hundredths of an inch. And then up to the north there, Haynes had uh, one to two inches of snow today where it was uh, colder. And of course that fell as all as snow, temperature right around 30 degrees. And then uh, clear skies and a cold morning uh, had minus 30s in some areas uh, over the central interior, minus 20s and minus 30s here in the sixth day of uh, April for the morning lows. and kind of a cold afternoon as well. And you can see the uh, mostly clear skies, Northern Bering Sea there, you can see the uh, ice edge, uh, but then you pick up some clouds there as you get uh, by St. Matthew Island and into the Pribilof, some clearing for the central Aleutians and rolling this through again, system coming across the Bering Sea there, clouds building out over the Western central areas with the main low center, a little bit farther back to the West. Uh, you can actually see uh, north of the central Aleutians there. And then we got, uh, weak trough over the southwest interior bringing areas of light snow generally l nothing more than a half an inch some areas could have picked up an inch other areas not much at all but uh, generally light kind of a widespread area there from uh, Kuskokwim or from actually Cape Newenham up into the lower uh, Yukon River Valley and then uh, break and then some lingering snow showers and clouds there up over the northeast interior say around Eagle but again, quite light, some clearing on the eastern Arctic coast, a little breezy, and then a very weak trough bringing some light snow showers into the western Arctic coast around Point Lay. And then the areas of rain and snow there, a couple of systems, one over the uh, Northwest Territories, and then that low just off the coast, kind of swinging surges of moisture into the panhandle. For tonight, that uh, Bering Sea storm deepens from what it is currently, uh, pretty good rate there, tightening up gradient, uh, pressure is still above 1,000 millibars. But uh, snow and rain and wind spreading into the Pribilofs. Uh, the front across the Aleutians is pretty weak, not really that significant, just some areas of rain. And then a weak trough, lingering snow showers from Denali Park across the Kuskokwim Valley, but again, really hit and miss, probably more miss than hit with that uh, very weak system. And uh, mostly clear, cold. So sit in the valley, Kenai Peninsula, again, temperatures down to near or just a little below zero in some areas from Kenai up to East Anchorage and into the uh, Susitna, Matanuska Valley. Copper River Basin, probably looking at 10 to 15 below again tonight. And then mostly clear, dry, variably cloudy central interior, a couple of weak troughs or some skiffs of snow up to the north. And then that low moves in with the blizzard warning for the Yukon Delta, or I'm sorry, the Cuscom Delta and winter weather advisory for Bristol Bay. Very strong winds on the back side of that system. Storm force winds coming into the Pribilofs and then light snow showers of the trough extending up the eastern Arctic coast, rain and snow showers of the Panhandle. Thursday, big storm in the Northeast Gulf. So uh, near storm force winds on the North Coast, say 45 knots, moderate to possibly heavy rain over the central and southern Panhandle and quite windy. And a really tight gradient now over uh, southern Alaska. They're from the Alaska Range in across the uh, Cook Inlet area, Kodiak Island. Strong northerly winds, colder temperatures, snow, po possibly blowing snow. 
up around the Talkeetnas and snow over the eastern interior, but clear and cold in the west. Next system pushing rain into the western Aleutians. Lows tonight, mid-20s to lower 30s for the Panhandle. And again, uh, 0 to 15 below Copper River Basin, near zero to Sitna Valley, and near zero for the, some areas of the Kenai Peninsula. 30 for Kodiak, 20 Bristol Bay. Uh, 15 to 25 below, maybe even 30 below or so for the uh, central and northern interior to the Arctic coast, and mid 30s for the Pribilofs, and mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Highs tomorrow, mid to upper 20s, south central Alaska, near 30 for Kachemak Bay, and upper 30s, lower 40s for uh, Kodiak Island, the Panhandle, mid 30s, Bristol Bay. Upper teens for the, Sisitna, or for the uh, Tanana Valley, below zero Arctic coast to the uh, Brooks Range, including the Seward Peninsula, but Nome up to three. And uh, let's see, near 40 for the Central Aleutians, lower 40s, Alaska Peninsula. Lows on Thursday morning, again, or Cuscom, or the uh, Cuscoquam Valley below zero, uh, five to 15, South Central Alaska, 30s for the Panhandle, well below zero, again, northern and western interior there, coldest in the northwest, and uh, lower 20s for the Pribilofs, and there's your highs for Thursday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic for Wednesday morning, IFR. Uh, from the central western Brooks Range out across the uh, north slope and then the central eastern Arctic coast. Marginal VFR back to the west and then down to the northern Seward Peninsula. VFR for the southern Seward Peninsula along the lower Yukon River uh, Valley there into the Delta. St. Lawrence Island VFR, IFR, Nunavak Island across the northern Bering and then another zone there. With the frontal boundary, uh, Pribilof Islands back toward uh, ADAC. Marginal VFR into Bristol Bay, southwest interior, southern, or most of the Cuscoam Valley, up to the Alaska Range, and kind of hugging the mountains there, up through the uh, Tanana Valley. VFR south and east of the mountains, as well as the Aleutian Range, Kodiak VFR. And uh, Panhandle, mostly marginal, uh, to start uh, becoming VFR, or staying, or becoming VFR in the northern areas and the southeast interior down to Kenai Peninsula, most of Cook Inlet, North Gulf Coast VFR. But uh, marginal VFR slipping into western and southern Cook Inlet with the IFR into Kamishak Bay, and that extends back into Bristol Bay and much of the, uh, all of the Cusquam Delta and the valley there, and then VFR northern Yukon Delta to uh, across the Seward Peninsula to the Selawik Valley. IFR, a narrow band there from the eastern Arctic coast down to the central Brooks Range, and uh, big area VFR there, Southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians, and just a little bit of marginal VFR for the Fox Islands and the Pribilofs. And then for uh, Thursday morning, widespread VFR out over the Bering Sea, but uh, IFR slipping on up to Shimia 2 and about to ADAC. Atka, marginal give or take, but Fox Islands VFR. Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, marginal. IFR along the Alaska Range up to uh, the northern Sitna Valley. And Denali Park area, marginal VFR up across the White Mountains, Yukon Flats, IFR. Uh, Eastern Brooks Range, Eastern Arctic Coast, and the Central and Western Arctic Coast IFR, as well as the Gulf of Alaska, Northern Panhandle, or I'm sorry, Gulf of La North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound there. And for the Panhandle, VFR with some marginal VFR right along the uh, north coast, uh, possibly affecting Elfin Cove, uh, but heavier back to the west. And then for the afternoon, IFR from uh, Cape St. Elias eastward to Yakutat, all the southeast coast uh, forecast to be IFR Thursday afternoon, and uh, the eastern interior there, north of the Alaska Range IFR, north slope and uh, Arctic coast. IFR, Central Coast, oh, marginal, a lot of VFR, Eastern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, Southwest Interior, Cuscoquam Valley, and the Middle and Lower Yukon River Valley, Bristol Bay, Kodiak, VFR, Pribilofs VFR, and then the next front pushing a pretty solid band of IFR into the Central Aleutian, Southwest Bering Sea. Passes, IFR possible, mainly northern entrance, otherwise marginal for Anatovic. Add again, marginal VFR, possible IFR in the northern approach. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR becoming IFR with the system progressing eastward. Uh, just downward trend the entire day for, uh, especially on the western entrance of both Lake Clark and Merrill. Rainy, uh, marginal, but conditions will begin to come down a little less rapidly than for Lake Clark and Merrill. Windy, marginal VFR becoming VFR. And Isabel VFR, Mentasta VFR, Tanita VFR, Portage, good VFR again tomorrow, and Chilkoot and White becoming VFR. Freezing levels, uh, 2 to 8,000 feet, or 2 to 4,000 feet, just north of the Pribilofs, 8,000 feet right near Atka, and icing. 
uh, with the uh, system coming in, good slug of moisture, so uh, quite uh, an area of considerable moderate rime icing there across uh, moving into Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, Dillingham, maybe into the southern Cuscombe Valley, but kind of hanging up on the southwest mountains there to the Cuscombe Delta. And the interior pretty good to the east and north, uh, maybe a zone of elevated icing potential, eastern uh, north slope there. Otherwise, uh, pretty icing free for the remainder of the state. And for the jet stream, strong west northwesterlies right across the Bering Sea, 145 knots there at the jet max core. And then uh, westerlies about 95 to increase to 120 knots on the eastern North Gulf Coast, 9,000 feet. Uh, that low center near Nunavak Island, 70 to 85 knot winds there over the southeast bearing. Westerly 60 knots across the Aleutian Range, diminishing over Kodiak, and some uh, breezy conditions up over the northwest interior with the Arctic low, and 3,000 feet. A couple of low centers, kind of a dual low center, give or take there. Uh, looks like it's dwelling, but anyway, the winds, 35 knots St. Lawrence Island, 55 to 60 knots there on the back side of that system, and uh, 55 knots out of the west of the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence. Uh, widespread moderate chop or considerable moderate chop, St. Lawrence Island, Yukon Delta Coast wrapping into the Pribilofs as well as the Alaska Peninsula and Unalaska. I can't really name anyone that has so much integrity as she does to the things that she's accomplishing. It's pretty amazing. Having Claire as a role model, just a strong woman in science and just so smart and so kind. It's just a huge confidence booster is that, hey, I could do that too, you know? That's, that's possible, that's successful, that's what I want to do. I would characterize her as a pioneer in the field. The amount and uh, quality of the work she's put out is, is uh, second to none. I know people who have a lot of tenacity. I know people that have integrity, but it's rare that people have both together in that you know, that combination that Claire does. Every morning, Dr. Claire Parkinson gets up before sunrise and runs two miles to work. She hasn't missed a day in nearly 40 years. To know the evolution of sea ice and how we observe it from space is to know Claire. This year, she's celebrating 40 years at NASA. When I arrived at Goddard, which was in July of 1978, it was an incredibly exciting period here. Satellites were pretty new, but a lot of data had been collected. NASA scientists were inundated with information, and Claire was in a cohort looking at sea ice, trying to make sense of a jumble of very raw, very new data. It was around that time that Claire and her team, at the time led by Dr. Jay Zwally, created the principal sea ice record that we use today. How does something like that record help you do your job? Oh, <laughs> that record is fundamental to understanding sea ice, so without it, we wouldn't know how rapidly it's changing. You may not realize it, but Claire's work studying the changing extent of the ice caps deeply affected our understanding of climate change, and relatedly, our understanding of how climate change affects life on Earth. One of the clearest signals for climate change that uh, resonates with people has been this shrinking of the polar ice cap in the summer that we're able to see because of uh, Claire's work. After we had a record that was about 15, 20 years long, we started noticing that the extent of the ice in the Arctic was getting smaller over time. Sea ice is formed on the surface of the ocean and therefore is made from seawater. The biggest concentration is in the Arctic, 
and it's also where the biggest loss in sea ice is occurring. Every year, NASA reports on the sea ice minimum and maximum extents. As expected, the data is concerning. By now, not only has this trend toward lesser ice continued, but it's even accelerated so that now the decreases are greater than what they had been. These trends are deeply troubling, but one thing's for sure. Our awareness of shrinking sea ice extent due to climate change was propelled faster and further after Claire Parkinson arrived at NASA. I mean, she takes her job seriously and the health and welfare of those instruments in space, yeah, she's, she's on it, you know? It's uh, one of the things you don't worry about because Claire's in the loop on these things. It's, it's gonna be fine. In science, we stand on the shoulders of giants, on the shoulders of those who explored before us. But then, some among us are giants. For a scientist, it's incredibly exciting to be studying these glaciers and ice sheets right now because they're doing something that hasn't happened in thousands of years. We're watching changes take place that haven't happened since the end of the last ice age. Tuesday was cold, I almost froze my toes. Oh, what's it gonna be next week? Who knows, that's climate. Oh, that's the climate you got. You take a bunch of weather and you average it together and you're doing the climate rock. glacial pace. It means something's happening so slowly you can barely tell it's happening at all. That used to describe the very incremental movement glaciers and ice sheets experienced each year. But now that's changing. We're tagging along with three NASA scientists to understand the different lengths they go to to not only investigate ice sheets and glaciers, but also communicate their often complicated science to the public. First, let's get oriented. Ice sheets, in pink, pretty much occur in only two places, Antarctica and Greenland. Glaciers in yellow play a key role draining melt off the ice sheet. Glaciers are also found in the high mountains, but we'll get to those in another episode. So we know that something's happening in Greenland right now that's unprecedented in the last several thousand years. That's Dr. Josh Willis, oceanographer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Josh and his team are tackling one of the major environmental challenges of the 21st century, trying to answer fundamental questions about how melting glaciers impact sea level rise. With my mission, Oceans Melting Greenland, or OMG for short, we're trying to understand just how much of Greenland's melt is caused by the oceans. Along with being one of NASA's top scientists working on the cryosphere, Josh is passionate about demystifying climate change in typically unconventional ways. I think by reaching out to people with a little bit of humor, a little bit of fun, maybe a song, you really have the opportunity to help people understand and come to terms with what we're doing to our planet. Because it's definitely happening and it's definitely a big deal and we need to start preparing for it. Down at the opposite pole, Dr. Kelly Brunt is getting ready for a major expedition. In December and January this coming year, uh, I'll actually be in Antarctica down near the South Pole collecting ground-based GPS data. This is actually Kelly's second expedition to the South Pole. The first occurred in December and January of last year. Both surveys are critical and will help validate data collected by NASA's Airborne Campaign, Operation Ice Bridge, and the recently launched satellite mission ISAT-2. All three of these layers, that ground-based, that airborne, and the satellite are all tied together. The ground-based helps validate both the satellite and the airborne, and the airborne helps give us more validation data for the satellites, but also a bigger story with respect to the depth of the ice sheet and what's going on underneath the surface. 
While some scientists are taking measurements in the field, others are looking for answers in physics and lines of code. For me, the, the projections that we, that we are doing, they do have a, a very personal meaning. Dr. Sophie Nowicki is an ice sheet modeler. That means she and her team have the important job of forecasting how ice will change in the future, which also predicts changes in sea level rise. It's a job she doesn't take lightly, especially since urban planning and infrastructure use her team's models to make decisions about the future and safety of their communities. When we make those projections that are 100 years in the future, 100 years can seem so far away, like I don't have to worry about it, it's just too far. But actually they are not. It's really like the future that we are looking at that our children, our grandchildren will see to experience. Whether it's learning to communicate in new ways, traversing a swath of Antarctica in a massive piston bully, or taking responsibility for an impactful climate forecast, our NASA explorers are pushing the limits of discovery every day. But on a very human level, they're people with families and friends who have a stake in finding out why and how the planet is changing as rapidly as it is. Every place, at least so far, that we have found life, we found water along with it. And so when we try to understand uh, the thresholds for life, where life might exist, elsewhere in our solar system and the universe. Water is one of those things that we look for. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Back, uh, looking at today's sea ice analysis, we've got, uh, let me get the slideshow in position here. There we go. Uh, continuing to uh, a little bit less ice, uh, but the decrease is slowed in Cook Inlet with colder temperatures now it came back in. And about the same for Bristol Bay and on out to the west along the ice edge, the main ice field there north of St. Matthew Island. A little bit thinner there on the north side of Nunavak Island, otherwise not much change elsewhere. Coastal water forecasts uh, north or for the uh, central north coast, central or about the entire coastline there, outer coastline, northwest 25, small craft advisories, extreme north coast there, east at 20, seven foot seas. Gale warnings for Lincoln Canal, northerlies at 35 knots, sea seven feet, small craft advisories for uh, Stevens Passage for north winds at 25, and northwest winds 15 knots for Clarence Strait. And then for Thursday, that big storm coming in uh, from the west there, so full gales there for the coast, at least 40 knot gales from the south with seas uh, running oh, 15 to 17 feet, 45 knots for the extreme north coast out of the southeast, and gale warnings coming into uh, Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage. Clarence Strait southeast 40, Stevens Passage southeast 35, Lincoln Canal southeast at 20. Prince William Sound tomorrow, northerly 20 knots, three foot seas, small craft advisories north Gulf Coast, north 25, seas four feet, small craft advisories Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, northwest winds 25 knots, and northeast 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet. Big increase in the winds on Thursday with that tightening pressure gradient. We'll go 30 knots sustained out of the north, northern Cook Inlet, but south of the forelands, gale warnings, north 35 knots and good storm warnings. Storm force winds, 55 knots from the northwest for Kamishak Bay, seas near 20 feet there, northwest 55 for the Barren Islands, 15 foot seas. Eastern North Gulf Coast, storm warnings, north winds 50 knots, 13 foot seas, Prince Liam Sound, gale warnings, north 35 knots, 6 foot seas, and northwest 40 for the western North Gulf Coast. And uh, for Kodiak Island tomorrow, uh, let's see, west winds 20 knots on the east side of the island, Shelikov Strait south 20, Alaska Peninsula south to southwest 35 knots for gale warnings there, and south 30 knots for Bristol Bay, southwest 30 knots, Sitkanak to Castle Cape. And for Thursday, Northwest 40 to 45 knots there with higher gusts on the east side of Kodiak Island uh, out of the northwest. And then northwest 40 knots from Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, 14 to 16 foot seas. And gale warnings, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, north 35 knots. Gale warnings also from Bristol Bay, northwest 35 knots and 10 foot seas. On Alaska Island tomorrow, southwest 35 knots, southwest 30 knots, Unmak Island, and west southwest 25 to 30 for Adak and Atka, and Chitka northwest 20, Kiska, Shimi, and Atu northeast 25. And then uh, coming up to just under storm force there for Shimi and Atu to Kiska, southeast 45 knots, 16 foot seas, and Chitka Island southeast coming up to 40 knots, and Adak and Atka east southeast 30, 35 knots. 
and uh, Unmac Island, east, 20 to 25 knots, and on Alaska Island, north to northeast, 25 knots. Southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, winds will be southwest at 30 knots. Pribilof Island, storm warnings, west 50 knots, seas 21 feet. Northern Bering Sea, northeast 45 knots, and northeast 30 for gale warnings, St. Lawrence Island, and 40 knot winds out of the northeast for the Yukon Delta coast. Thursday, St. Lawrence Island, brisk wind advisories down uh, for northwest winds at 25. Yukon Delta Coast, north 25, northeast 25 for St. Matthew Island and the Pribilofs. Gale warnings for the uh, Cuscombe Delta Coast, south of Nunavik Island from northerlies at 35 knots with 9 foot seas. For the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, not too bad wind wise, southwest 10 to 15 knots, west 15 knots for the central and western Arctic coast, Cape uh, Beaufort to Cape Thompson, northwest 15, Cape Thompson to Wales, north 15, and northwest, northwest 20 knots from Wales to Cape uh, Thompson, and then 15 knot winds for the western Arctic coast, and light winds out of the northwest at 10 knots for the central coast, and west northwest 15 to 20, up a little bit there for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast. For tonight, uh, look for some light snow, flurries, patchy fog, but uh, any snow won't be much of an, in the way of accumulation up there. Uh, dry over the central interior and that thing over the uh, southwest interior up to uh, say Denali Park, some light snow across the Cuscombe Valley, snow showers, snow showers northern panhandle to mixed rain and snow down to the south and next system drives in with a blizzard warning for the Cuscombe Delta tomorrow starting tonight and a wind weather advisory for Bristol Bay for snow blowing snow 48 inches and winds 40 to 50 miles an hour. Otherwise uh, a lot better elsewhere with some mixed rain and snow showers over the panhandle and a big storm comes into the northeast gulf on thursday these forecasts are for planning purposes only call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing always file a flight plan before you go fly the u.s coast guard auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating